at DevOx Belgium with Heinz, Java specialist Heinz Kubitz. Heinz, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Heinz, I know that you run a series of workshops in Crete where you're based and you yeah. do a lot of other stuff as well. Can you tell me exactly what, what do you do with your daily role? Yeah, so what we do is we have courses on the island of Crete where people come to just relax but actually also to learn at the same time. And um, but I also do a lot of Java programming. I do. I write a Java specialist newsletter, which is read by quite a few people by now. Uh, I've been doing that for quite a long time. And in the newsletter, I look at a bit more advanced topics, and so not just the beginner stuff about Java, but also a bit more into the, you know, gory details. For example, what is significant about the identity hash code between Java 7 and Java 8? How has it changed, and why has it changed? It's a kind of really deep dive stuff. Yeah, yeah not some just of it. Some of it. Essential. What is a lambda? <laughs> no. Well, I, I do that too. I mean, I look at lambdas too. Um, I, one of the newsletters I wrote recently looked at the problem with exceptions and lambdas. And one way to work around that, I'm doing a talk tomorrow at DevOx, where I look at um, how to write mixins with lambdas. And, um, and, and actually, a very what seems like a very simple question is what exactly is a functional interface? Yeah. And um, I put this up in Athens, uh, this talk, and hardly anybody actually got them all right. In fact, really? nobody got them all right. That's surprising, because I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stuff out there on functional. You kind of think people, yeah, maybe it seems they're so up obvious. on it now. It there's seems a lot so of people obvious. switched over to yeah. Java 8, and they're kind of using it every day. Yeah, absolutely. I even had people who were like um, Oracle presenters get some of them really? wrong. Absolutely. That is surprising. Yeah, it's quite surprising. Have you noticed any kind of other things with Java 8 that maybe people are surprising things that hey, that, that should be, that should, seems like it should be easy, that people kind yeah. of maybe need to work on, or that people find at your workshops that people keep asking you about? Well, one of the new things which we've got is parallel streams in Java, Java 8. And um, the challenge with parallel streams is that if you, that, um, the more popular it becomes, the less it's going to work. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> at the moment, nobody's really using them. So um, if you have a parallel stream in your code, yeah. you're going to get like the you know, spread across all the cores and you get great speed up. Yeah. But as other people start to learn about it, then they're all going to do it, and then you're not going to get any speed up anymore. And in fact, you're going to end up having a bottleneck on the parallel streams. Okay, so so by using or? the parallel streams, it's going to make your code slower rather than faster. Okay. So I did a workshop in, in, uh, in France a course, actually a three-day course in France a few weeks ago. It was the first time I did my Extreme Java Concurrency for Java 8 course. And um, during that, we discussed this. And, and actually, one of, the one of the people in the course came up with the solution that what you can do is you can, you can start your, your parallel stream code inside another fork join pool. And if you do that, then it uses that fork join pool. So you can still increase your parallelization. Okay, so you're kind of jumping over that. It's like a workaround, that. workaround, yeah. And what we did was, um, because I had a student who was in Australia attending remotely, I often have remote students attending, um, I actually... It's almost like a VJUG type thing, or...? It's, it's, I use a different sort of webinars or video conferencing technology. It works really well, really well. Um, I've been doing that now for about four years, and it's, it's really effective, the video conferencing and remote learning. But I recorded the entire course, and I've made that available now on, um, on Parlays, the, the new courses. Oh, fantastic. Product. Yeah. So you're kind of going to be doing some courses for, that will be linked to Parlays. Is that why you coming up that people can look at and kind of links in again to your material, not just for beginners, but for kind of the experts in the field as well, people who really know their stuff, but maybe there's yeah. some new bits too. So I like, I like focusing on the intermediate programmer. I, I, the, the totally advanced guy, he doesn't, he can teach me stuff anyway. I mean, I mean, uh, Oracle, like, but... No, let's not talk about Oracle here. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about those guys. We'll talk about other guys outside of Oracle who know a lot more than the people in Oracle. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that. Cut that out. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Don't cut it out. <laughs> okay, so there are ex outside so, of There are a lot of people, stars there are a lot of rock stars, that, a lot yeah. of Java champions out there. People that um, maybe other people are who, learning who know, from. But. Yeah, who know a lot, really a lot, and I can't teach them very much. Um, but but if you're an intermediate programmer, so you've done Java already for two, three years, yeah. and you think, now, what are you going to do next? You've done, you know, you've done Java, you, you think you know a lot, yeah. um, then that concurrency course is really good for you to do. Okay, and how and if you're a beginner, how time consuming oh, is this? Is this something people can do kind of in their lunch hour? Well, is this yeah, it depends on you. You see, the, the thing is that my when I do a normal course, it's a three-day intensive course. Okay. So you come to Crete for three days, or I come to you for three days, whatever suits you. But this is the same material with exercises that you have to complete. Um, 
and you can stretch out as long as you want. You can take one year if you want. Okay, you can so you take can do two a range of projects when you're doing whatever you want. So if you want to do it during lunch hour, that's fine. It's about each lecture is between 45 minutes and just over an hour. So it would actually be possible during lunch hours. Okay. Um, but then also to exercise, you can do that at the next lunch hour. So you can spread it out over over um, a few weeks, three, four weeks if you want, okay. and do the material that way. And at the end, if you if you listen to all the lectures and do all the exercises, I would even give you a certificate. Oh, fantastic! So you've, you've got like a little it. mini qualification there as well. Yeah, 